Okay guys, I'm doing this video a little bit earlier than normal today um, because I had another meeting right before this uh, video and it was just, it felt like the right time to do it. Um, taking a break from packing today and I'm gonna focus on laundry and sorting. So today is day 25 of our 2024 journey, adoption journey. Um, our children have been in the orphanage for 1,008 days. We have been trying to adopt from Liberia in general for 667 days. And we have been matched with these children specifically for 570 days um, and trying to get to them. So the I just want to talk about a couple of the things about Liberia. I know that a lot of adoptive parents that are in the Liberia program watch these videos and they're not matched yet. And I know that a lot of them will watch them because they're looking for like tips. And, and they're also looking for a timeline because once we see me move um, to Africa and once my kids exit that orphanage, that really makes it seem like things are happening for them as well. Um, and I remember feeling that way and being in that. So I just I want to give you guys some hope um, on things um, just to the best of my ability. And I just want you to know that when we started this adoption, we were grieving um, the loss of our fosters. And our fosters, I miss them. Um, the fosters that we had at that time um, had been here for a long time. And we had um, opened our home for them to stay and, and be adopted. And they were aware that we were open to that. Um, they had an opportunity to be reunified with their extremely large sibling group that we were not capable to. We didn't have the capacity to care for their whole sibling group. And our kids, uh, um, other other three kids too. So, anyway, long story short, we were grieving when we started, and um, some of you are closer to the starting line, and I am closer to the finish line. And um, I don't. I just wanted to say that that like we were excited to adopt from Liberia. Um, we wanted to give a permanent place in our home to um initially we were just thinking one kid and then the more we looked at what the needs were in Africa and then realized we we had had five kids under this roof and done well as parents as you know we, five worked for us um and then we talked to our other kids about it and the sibling thing is a big deal to them you know trying to keep siblings together and that was um something we did so I just I was thinking about like my initial blog post and um, initially we said one kid and then, you know, a few months, a couple, like a month later, we kind of adjusted it to two. And that was, you know, multifactorial on our part. Um, but we, it was my husband's idea to go to Liberia, actually, because we had had friends that adopted from there and we were invested in a program there that we thought was a good program. And of course, we still think it's a good program. Um, but we also had, um, we thought that it would be faster, you know, because we it usually was like max two years. Um, the website actually says two to four years, so not to misrepresent the um, misrepresent our agency at all in the in the sense that um, they say two to four years. So that's that's life. But um, because we were willing to adopt sibling group and kids that were a little bit older, you know, we were matched a little bit faster. Um, so, but I just wanted to kind of revisit this blog post that I wrote, and I hope I don't cry when I'm reading it. Um, but I want to read this one, and there's one other one I wanted to touch on. Um, that I think it centers me a little bit as to why we chose um, to adopt from Liberia. And our adoption itself has, has just been paused, but a lot of other adoptions have gotten extremely messy from a diplomacy standpoint and a legal standpoint. And a resource standpoint and um so that's not where we are yet we may get there but we'll see this is a dot from liberia day one and i did a blog post and i know on here i talk about number of days number of days matters to me um this is day 25 in my new year's resolution to to youtube with you guys every day just to leave a footprint of of my kids story as much as i can and I think even if I only have like one or two people that are viewers, like there's like my friend Mallory says she watches every day and gets her mom involved in that. And um, so also like, I know some of my other friends, like uh, my friend Audrey says she watches, you know, and, but I, whether anybody watches, I need to speak for them as their mom. I need to do something as their mom today. So we'll, we're gonna revisit this thing that I wrote 667 days ago and then 
and then uh, see how that goes. Um, adopt from Liberia day one. When I think about adopting a child, I think about a fight. It always seems like a fight. Not a fight with fists and blood and broken teeth and cheering crowds on the outside, but it does sometimes feel like that on the inside. The analogy of boxers in a ring pops in my head. Yet in my head, I'm the only one. I'm the only boxer in the beginning. My first opponent is just yes. The word yes. More on that as we go. Next comes a stack of papers. All about me and my family. No boxing gloves needed, just a pen and paper. I did this type of homework 10 years ago, the first time we adopted. This time I have my iPad and Apple Pencil to ease my frustration along with a printer and a scanner and very little snail mail. Today is not truly day one in this process, but serves as day one in the sense that I can find my words on it today. Words I think I can share with strangers because there are lots of kids who need parents. Ugh. Hoping my story brings hope to them in that big idea of each intentional addition of a child to a family starts somewhere. This story has a lot of big ideas. Round one of adoption involves a written form of saying yes. My husband and I are excited to start. We are also grieving the end of our foster parenting days and the children that were here and now have moved on. I talked about them a minute ago. I didn't cry at all. It's just like this sentence, I think. Maybe I should skip it. They carved out a piece of our souls that we sent with them. And our souls are for sure shaped differently now. We are watching our three remaining permanent daughters who have been permanent since their birth. As they process their own grief of loss, please don't confuse the word permanent with as biological. My children permanently assigned to me are full of grief for siblings they helped protect during a transitional time of uncertainty. Yes, it hurt them. No, we are not quitting fostering because it hurt them. Yes, it hurt us too. No. One day I'll, I'll learn to put on waterproof makeup for these videos, I think. We do not regret even one second with the fosters. We remain here for them now and in perpetuity. This next part is something different. Goodness. This something different was a dream to cross the ocean to add to my family. That has been my idea since my 18th birthday. And the reason is I was um, I was traveling internationally with um, the founder of our, our adoption agency when I was 18 years old. I turned 18, um, traveling back home from Romania where I had met true orphans for the first time in an orphanage. And that's really what spurred my... I need to cross the ocean again, dream. Very young, 18 year old Rachel. <sighs> An idea I was willing to surrender wholeheartedly. Should that be God's ask? Specifically, if, if we were needing to parent the fosters long term. A very difficult surrender indeed, but mine to surrender nonetheless. There is a limit to the number of bandwidth hours a parent can supply and still be successful at parenting. Had there been a tangible need under our roof that required permanency before we crossed the ocean, I would have accepted that happily and continued to enable and encourage other parents to adopt just one more, as I have the last 24 years of my adult life. Crossing oceans to help kids find safety and peace is what I did when I was young. I am grateful for the influences that encouraged me to supply the written form of yes to cross oceans when I had very little to lose. The teenage version of me benefited from that. Ugh. Today, I have a long list of reasons that I could say no to this dream. That list includes my three permanent daughters. To protect their privacy, I will do my best to leave their names out of this blog. Today, they are 9, 8, and 6. And of course, that was when we started this. Now they're 10, 10, and 7. But here, their names will be original, middle, and little. Their childhood is a huge reason to keep my feet on U.S. soil. They are statistically safer here, as am I. But who might they be if we go and take them with us?
and that's important. Um, we don't really have like the right family dynamics or people that we could, we, there are people we could leave our kids with. There's certainly people we plan to leave our kids with if something were to happen to both of us, but, um, it's just not, it's not logistically realistic and I don't want them to miss this chance. Um, my connection to the 18 year old version of me is a story that I've told for years about an orphan I met in Romania when I was a teenager. My connection to her has anchored my confidence to this endeavor and my version of her story can be found here. And in this blog, I have a link to that. But briefly, I, I found a little girl in an orphanage that I met that had a scar on her head. And she was bald, just like baby bald, 18 months old. And she had been th born, thrown into a dumpster and left for dead. And a dog had pulled her out and nursed her maybe for a day or two before she was found by authorities and taken to the ER. And that, you know, if we don't save these orphans, God will use dogs to do it. And that's just that. Um, our permanent children are looking backwards with the same complicated hearts we have. They are also looking forward to the future and asking what kid we can help next and can the next one be a sister that never moves away and can we please look for one that has brown skin like me that's what my oldest daughter said because she is of African descent so from those questions repeated a lot this week it sounds like our kids are ready for day one of adoption we respect their wishes and live their perspectives with them and we also desire the permanency of adoption their three wishes helped us decide how to start day one Answer to the first question. The next kid we will help in a big way. When they said, what kid will we help next? The answers are these. The next kid we will help in a big way is waiting on the other side of the world. We have to do a lot of homework to get to them. We know a place in Africa where they've already been helping kids. Yes, the second question, can she be one that never leaves? Can the next kid be one that never leaves? Yes, we can adopt a child or children who never have to move away. They will be as much our child as you are. We think it would be fun to go to another country to do it. Um, and the third, original, kids in Liberia at the place we know do have brown skin just like you. We can fly there and bring one, one or two home. We know a safe place for kids looking for parents to take kids home. Li <sighs> the last sentence says Liberia adoption day one, we're ready to begin. And I just want to say that I haven't, we've been doing this for 667 days. In the last 25 days, I have written something down or gotten on this video or blogged or done something on their behalf because now I'm connected, now I'm vested. Um, in the first 60 days of our adoption, I, I really didn't. Um, and then my friend was traveling to Liberia. My friend Devin, um, who I talk about a lot, who's going to babysit my dog. Um, while we're gone, she traveled to Liberia uh, in June, and we started that blog in April. And so I blogged with her. She would send me information, and I would blog, and we would have a tandem blog. And I can link that below if anyone's interested in reading it. It's therapeutic for me. Um, kind of kept me going. It, it made the fundraising part easier because I was asking people to fundraise for these invisible kids. But yet, I had this story of this story of this of her adoption kind of at its end, but mine at its beginning. And as I near the end, and I know a lot of stories that are in the middle and at the beginning, and I know that there may be people watching these these this playlist one day um, down the road that is considering adoption internationally and adoption from Liberia and then what to do and whether or not to take your kids with you and all of those things. And I want you to know that all of my videos and all of my written where all of it is is the honest truth so I don't know I hope that um I guess I would hope that my opinion or my you know whatever I put out there doesn't decrease the number of people adopting at all or scare you at all um I'm not scared um I'm apprehensive and I want to be careful not to make anything worse for the children that I've chosen to parent in Liberia. Um, I also want you to know that, um, that this is hard. Like if you've got a rocky marriage and you think adoption is going to make it better, like you need to go into this with like 
a solid marriage, a solid support. You need good friends. You need friends that are going to come see you whether you want them to or not. You need people that are going to call you. And if you don't answer, they're going to keep calling until they actually hear your voice. Because it's just, it is like this vacuum of emotion. And it can be extremely lonely. So like, if you're like, and you don't have to have your life all together, but if you're considering international adoption or adoption in general, it's like you need to prepare yourself for it in a way that I don't even know how to tell you to do. Um, I wish that these videos were more fun today. Um, the packing thing is pretty fun. And I, I watched it back and was like, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but I just want you to know that the reason that we adopt is because God adopted us. And the reason that we continue to pursue Liberia is because we're finishers. We're gonna finish this. Um, our fundraising is in good shape. Uh, we're not really worried about money at the moment. I mean, Jeremy's always worried about money because that's just kind of what he does, but like, he can't, he doesn't crunch the numbers like I do and I'll let you know when I'm worried. But I'm not worried today. We do have our crowdfunding site. If you just wanna like get on a crowdfunding site and just like give a dollar, you can. I'm linking it in the description every day. Um, just so that you know. Um, like you can follow along in our story. If you give a dollar, you'll get my you get emails from me, so you don't have to actually subscribe and go to YouTube every day. Um, but I was gonna read another blog post, but I think this is enough for today. And I don't regret this adoption journey. I, I think about the people that I've become friends with, and I wouldn't know otherwise. Um, and I think about the ways that even though I haven't met my Liberian daughters yet, the ways that my life has been enriched by the plight to adopt them. Like I sell Noonday Collection, which this is one of the necklaces. This is the belief silver necklace made by trafficking victims in East Asia. My Uganda bracelets on, India bracelets on, um, my India rings on. I need to get my regular rings fixed, my engagement ring. <laughs> It's like the prongs are loose and I just didn't want to lose it. And so I took it off. Um, but I, um, the Noonday collection, the fill the box, Jennifer Tilton with fill the box has been fantastic. She's helped us. We have probably, we've collected over 80,000 pounds of, of textiles and clothing and we kind of finished our fundraising and shifted to help others. And then we've kind of gone back and put a little bit in our emergency fund. Um, we're helping the Hamiltons who adopt medically fragile kids. We've helped some other nonprofits with our church and the um, Daytech family that lives in the Philippines. We've helped them with their ministries and done a few drives for them. I did a drive for them and a new day show for them. Um, mops, um, moms of preschoolers here in Cape Coral. I'm doing a new day fundraiser for them soon. There's just people that I've met and people that I knew, but like now we're f like closer friends because of our adoption. It's just drawn in some of the most amazing people that have enriched our lives, that have held us up when days are dark, that have encouraged us and supported us and continue to knock on our door and say, what else do you need? You know, my neighbor two doors down, call him two doors down Bill, you know? Uh, we have next door Bill, we have two doors down Bill. They're both fantastic neighbors and I like them both a lot and they're different but two doors down Bill you know he's kind of more of like a I mean he's he's the nicest guy ever he's probably knows how to fix stuff and he's he's just he walks his dogs every day and checks on us and so encouraging and so uplifting and just excited to see more people live here and um just those those just little lifts like do you need anything how can i help you and like if you were to say yeah i need something these people really do help you and like my neighbors across the street um him and his wife you know they're just like get on a plane soon like really you're getting on a plane like what do we need to do how do we need to take care of your house while you're gone like that kind of stuff and um just it just never ends so um it's a good thing so um it's okay to ask for help. I've asked for a lot of help. I've asked for more help over the last 18 months than I've ever asked for in my adult life, for sure. Um, it's easy to ask for help now, but like, 
I just want you guys to know that um, we're going to go to Liberia and we have no court dates. We have no paperwork in hand. We have no um, promise of anything working out um, except for giving our kids a hug and saying, hey, nice to meet you. We hear good things about you that kind of thing um that's all that we have um but it's just it's a good thing like it's gonna be fine um but the last thing i just i wanted to read this verse from um from james 3 15 through 18 and then i'll, I'll stop talking it's about you know a being a town of peace and creating a town of peace. <clears throat> the wisdom of this world should never be mistaken for heavenly wisdom. It originates below in earthly realms with the demons. Any place where you find jealousy selfish, or, and selfish ambition, you will discover chaos and evil thriving under its rule. Heavenly wisdom centers on purity, peace, gentleness, deference, mercy, and other good fruits untainted by hypocrisy. The seed that flowers into righteousness will always be planted in peace by those who embrace peace. And I do want to peacefully travel to Liberia and I want to peacefully <clears throat> make an appointment with Liberian courts to adopt my daughters and I want to peacefully live in that country for about a month and then I want to peacefully go to a U.S. Embassy appointment. I want to be interviewed. I want their birth family to be interviewed and I want us to exit as a family and I want it to be a good story and a victorious story and a story of peace. And I want to say that the mama bear in me wants to be quiet and the mama elephant in me that's peaceful and likes team team sports, I want that one to shine. I want my spirit animal to be an elephant, not a bear, and not definitely not a lion. But at the same time, I want you to know that I struggle every day with anger at the system and with just disappointment with our government. But I'm going to read this verse. Wisdom of this world should never be mistaken for heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom centers on purity, peace, gentleness, deference, mercy, and other good fruits untainted by hypocrisy. I am not a hypocrite. And I don't want anything to be tainted by hypocrisy. But I want to plant those seeds of peace everywhere that I go. Whether it's on the YouTube channel. My kids are playing. Whether it's on the YouTube channel whether it's in Liberia, whether it's in Cape Coral, Florida, no matter where it is, I hope that I'm planting a seed of peace. And I hope that those families, like my friend Mallory and her family and some of the other families that I've met recently on like Facebook Messenger that are in a holding pattern like we are or they haven't been matched with kids yet, um, wisdom, heavenly wisdom is about peace, deference, and um, mercy, purity, gentleness, and other good fruits. And deference to God's wisdom on this is hard. I told a friend of mine uh, yesterday, my friend Audrey, I told her yesterday, I was like, you know, I think if God had told me, like, Rachel, you can adopt these kids in nine months, but I'm going to give it an extra year, and it's going to be more like 18 to 22 months or so. It's going to be more like two years for you because I am going to use you, and I'm going to collect a whole bunch of other people your family and a whole bunch of other people with really good resources because I need a good team of people that love me to shine a spotlight on something that's very dark that I need to turn the lights on and yes I'm gonna let you adopt these kids and yes they're gonna be your kids but I'm gonna need a year to collect the right team to be in the right place at the right time to turn a light on something that wasn't your fault that you didn't do that certainly these kids didn't do, but that humanity in general needs to look at with a with a bigger light. And I'm gonna use you to be part of that light. I think if God had said that to me, this the 18 months, like the two year part would have been a lot more tolerable. And I was talking to my friend yesterday and I said that to her and she said, well, how do you know that God hasn't said that to you? Like. Are you waiting for a megaphone from heaven kind of thing? She didn't say megaphone. Those were my words. But that was the tone. How do you know that that's not what God has said to you? And 
she's right. So maybe that's just me making uh, lemonade out of lemons. Maybe not, but if it we're gonna take an extra year, I'm okay with that. If it's gonna turn on the lights for something super evil um, to be cast out. And so that's all I'm gonna say about that. I do appreciate the work of um, our agency um, at protecting our kids, at having multiple kids in there. They're not really usually having that many kids in the orphanage. They've got a lot there now. They're keeping all of them safe. Um, if you pray, I appreciate your prayers. If you hope, I appreciate your hope in my, in my, uh, on my behalf. Um, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow.